What up, guys? Just chilling. Freestyle Steve coming back with it again. You know what I do. Just thought I'd try something different. I'm trying a different camera position. Um, normally, I have my, uh, well, my phone camera on my desk. And I usually use a, how would you say it? A pretty adjustable tripod. I, I don't know how tall the tripod can get, but it can definitely get over over three feet, you know, over a yard, it gets really high in the way it adjusted. So I put it on a desk and I just adjust it to get level with me. With this one right here, I have this on my TV. It's one of those like little um, tripods that, you know, you can wrap around like fence poles and stuff. I think they're called like Octa tripod stands or something. You, they're, you know, little plastic ones, but they're nice because they're kind of flexible. So I have it positioned on my TV. So, you know, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't even know if, um, you know, if, if I'm in view, I might have to me move it forward a bit. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, so that's what's up, guys. Just thought I'd come back, try this out. Um, you know, hopefully, I don't like the way it looks. I think I got to straighten it out a little bit. Hopefully it, uh, hopefully it, uh, Hopefully it turns out okay. Um, not only that, I have an unboxing I want to do too. So since we're uh, going to go ahead and do this, we'll get this unboxing out of the way. And this is a three-in-one unboxing. That's what's up, you know. I've been, um, you know me, I, I just got my bass. Um, I have my guitar. I haven't quite... Uh, got to uh opening that yet you know so maybe i'll uh i'll go ahead and do that in, in it when you know when i get some time in the next day or two or maybe i'll wait and do it like friday you know maybe i'll just i'll call it a free stuff friday i don't know it's not necessarily a free stuff but you know um gotta get to my guitar so we'll do that probably in the next few days but this is another how would you put it? it's another instrument related um unboxing what it is is it's something for the bass that I picked up. It, it, it's kind of like a pedal, but, well, it's not really a pedal. Um, see, myself, I don't have a bass amp. So what I gotta do is hook up to the mixer if I wanna record anything with my bass. And I'm kind of, I was kind of leery of that because I don't wanna blow my speakers, you know, I don't wanna mess up my mixer. I mean, with, with you know, playing a bass, the, the strings are, you know, a lot thicker than guitar strings, they resonate a little more. They're, they're more frequency, definitely more low-end frequency. And, you know, sometimes when you push too much low-end frequency in something, you can blow a speaker or, or something of that nature. And, you know, I, I definitely don't want to do that because, you know, I don't have the money to a, afford new stuff. So what I ended up getting is it, it's, it's a box that helps, you know, like kind of like a little preamp, I guess you could say that. It, it, amp it gives amplification to what's passing through it as well as kind of balances the signal out so you can hook up like a guitar you know or something like like a bass or something like that to your mixer and the levels should be you know fairly decent i'm not sure if, if you know that's what the whole point of what, what this is called is a di box i think that's you know a direct inject box i think that's what it's to do is is supposed to match the impedance of the instrument and the mixer, you know, so you're not all over the place. So it does that, but it also offers a preamp as well. So basically, what I'll do with it is instead of, you know, hooking the bass straight to the mixer, the bass will go into this thing first, and then this thing will go into the mixer. So this almost acts as like a little preamp in between the mixer. My mixer has, you know, it has, um, it has four what are they xlr xdr extended dynamic range um mic pre's on it so it does have preamps you know when i hook up my turntables to it i'm, I'm able to you know play it through the mixer because it, it's got those four mic pre's on it you know so this basically can be used probably as a mic pre too you know i, I have a, a art tube mp studio mic pre which i've never used with the mics but i gotta try it but it, it was something you know if not using this to hook up to the mixer, I could hook directly into my art tube. Um, let's see if I got that. This thing right here. I could hook directly into this thing, and then this thing would go into the mixer, and this acts as kind of like a preamp, and 
you know, a, a, a direct inject box that kind of will uh, do some of that uh, matching for me. But this one, that's a mic preamp. That That's, you know, for, for microphone tube preamp. So basically, you know, if, if I wanted a little bit more, you know, a little more beef to my vocals, I would hook the mic up to that and then hook that up to the mixer and that that's going to add a little bit more warmth it's it, it's a tube slash you know preamp little thing so it's going to give you a little little more warmth to your vocal sound a little more you know just a little more instead of without that i mean you can use that for bass and you know and guitar too I, i've read where people have hooked it up um to their bass but this one is made specifically for bass it's a behringer you know didn't break the bank. I like getting deals. Who does it? You know, twenty nine ninety nine. So, with that said, I'm gonna open this. I have to use these damn scissors because my knife broke. Yeah, cheap little knife that I got from a. I did a review on it a long time ago too. It was from a, I think, tiny deal. It's like a pocket credit card knife. Um, you know, it it uh, messed up on me. So. Uh, I have two of them actually, so I hope the other one don't mess up on me. I gotta find it. But um, let's go ahead and get this open. So this is three in one, but the main accessory is that um, direct inject DI preamp thing I was talking about for the base. It's made by Behringer. You know, it's called the BDI21, I think. V Tone Base Driver. Base amp modeler direct recording preamp DI box pedal. So there's a lot, you know, it, it's direct recording preamp DI box, you know, amp modeler. So it, it's probably, you know, got certain amp, I guess you could say amp presets in it that might make your bass sound like that, you know. I mean, the output of your bass when it comes out of your monitor speakers or, you know, you could even hook into that and then hook into a bass amp. So, you know, there, there's a lot of uses for it they're pretty how would you put it um you know pretty uh pretty good studio tools to have definitely you know and, and other other than the um the base thing i got this uh, di base driver preamp box i got two other little things i got this stuff called uh this stuff's pretty good i got two um what'd you say two bottles of this it's called finger ease and basically you just spray it up and down your um, your fretboard you know and it lubricates your strings and you let it dry then you can polish them you know that's usually what I do and it, it just helps pro prolong the life of your strings keeps them a little brighter cleans the junk off you know so I'm gonna get some other stuff too that I use you know I have getting back into guitar so this stuff's good for your fretboard and you can also spray it on the on you know your neck the back of your neck because a lot of times you know you might pick up your guitar and you know if it's sitting there for a while and you don't clean it and it gets dusty your neck will get dusty and sometimes it just seems like it you know might be hard to um, slide on the back of your neck so this is fretboard conditioner polisher cleaner string lubricant whatever and um also neck it also um, I guess you could say, um, what am I trying to say? Cleans your neck, rejuvenates your neck as well. So, you know, if, if you apply this to your neck and, and clean it in your, the neck of your guitar, you should be able to slide a little bit better, you know, to, to have more, um, when you're playing, you know, touching the underside of the neck should be a little more comfortable. And I noticed too, because after, after, you know, when my guitars sit for a while and I pick them up and then I try to play, it's a little harder to slide. So, had to buy two bottles of this but I was looking through my stuff the other day and I actually didn't realize I had pretty much a full bottle I don't have the lid but you know it's like so that's good you can't ever have too much um, good stuff you know like that okay so there's that next I just bought me it looks pretty pretty nice durable cloth I mean it was only a dollar fifty this is like a terry fiber cloth you know something quick to clean your instruments with and stuff. That's one thing I wanted to get was some instrument polish, which I, I forgot to get on this order, you know, to go with this cloth. But this is, you know, dollar fifty. you really can't beat it. And it feels really nice. I don't know if this is terry cloth or, you know, like a flannel cloth, but it feels thick. And, you know, from when, when I read it, it, it said it's, it's a good cloth to uh, clean your guitar with or without polish. So that's cool. You know, you don't necessarily have to buy any conditioner or polish and this to just if your guitar is a little dusty you know bring it out clean it i mean 
I imagine, you know, this thing will collect dust and probably get a little dirty, but, you know, I, it's probably nothing, a little bit of warm water and soap to probably handle it. You might even be able to put it in the washer, maybe on cold or something, you know, I don't know, but feels pretty heavy duty. feels like something that would uh, definitely be able to, to wipe down your guitar. And it's made by DR, their string company. I don't know if you can see that. It says handmade. I've tried them. They make really good strings. You know, so there's that. Okay. And our main one here. What we've been uh, wanting to get to. So this was the uh, purchase that I was talking about. <clears throat> so there it is. It looks like it's the, I don't know if that's the BDI. I think it is. DI standing for, I'm, I'm going to guess, direct inject. So if you guys see that on the top where it says BDI 21, I'm going to just, you know, throw this out there. But I do know that DI is abbreviation for direct inject. So maybe B is base. So maybe that whole thing up there, you know, maybe that stands for base direct inject 21. Maybe this is like the model BDI 21 or something, you know. So it's telling, you know, B-Tone Bass Driver DI. So that's pretty much what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see the controls there and if they're pretty uh, self-explanatory or not. It, you know, and on the back of it, it, it says, you know, Bass Amp Modeler um, Direct Recording Preamp. So like I said, it can add a little bit of a amplification if you don't have an amp. Direct Recording Preamp DI Box. So, you know, there's a... And then, then it's a. Uh, here's the the. I don't know if you. I'll read this to you guys. It says this analog modeling base preamp stomp box isn't just another direct input box. You know, for recording our performance applications, you can also use it to dial up vintage two tones, slap sounds, crunchy distortion. So it's kind of like you know a, a box for tone tones too so you can get like it's it's saying you know you can also use it to dial up vintage tube tones slap sounds crunchy distortion and a truckload of priceless amp tones that would normally require a mountain of effects processors it is a di box and a great one at that with a gold plated xlr socket and ground lift so you can avoid those ugly hum loops step up to solid bass with the V-Tone Bass BDI-21. Analog modeling bass preamp stomp box with DI recording output. Authentic V-Tone modeling technology capable of dialing up vintage two tones, funky slap sounds, crunchy distortions, and all in between. So that's pretty much what it says on the, um, the side of the box right there. You know, that's cool. That's telling you, um, I don't know if you guys can see it. Pretty much, uh, still some bottom up pretty much the description right there and with that said i'm gonna open it so it looks like the top just comes off and there she blows you guys look this is exactly what it looks like i don't know if you guys can see that but it, it's kind of like a pedal you know stomp box but more so um oh yeah there's your your button the Stomp box button, that's how we turn it on, turn it off, activate it, maybe activate the DI function. So it's definitely a, definitely cool, you know. That's a, see it right there where it says in and out. So you'd hook your guitar up to the input, you'd hook your output up to your, uh, your mixer or whatever. Or you can, uh, you can even xlr out it says balance so if, if you're using a, you know you hook your input into there i think most of my chords are balanced there could be some imbalance but then if you have an xlr balanced um connection you can hook it up into your your uh, preamp <coughs> but see i'm not sure if i would use this xlr connection to i mean to hook into your mixer because on my mixer i believe that my xlr um inputs i have four of them they have mic preamp so that might you know this preamp with the mic preamp on the mixer might be a little bit <clears throat> too much preamp for the bass you know you, you probably got to use one or the other i mean it it's probably not big deal it would probably just be more so mixing the levels between both preamps but 
that might introduce extra noise, probably hub that you don't want. So I don't know if I'll be using that, you know, because my XLR inputs on my mixer, they, you know, they're the ones, they're the four mic preamps on the mixer. But I'll definitely can use that, you know. You're already going to get preamp from this stop box, so the out of this will just have to go into one of the, uh, one of the, uh, mixer inputs, you know. There you go. So pretty cool, guys. There's the instructions. I don't want to open that. So basically how you would use this, there's your tones, right, your, your knobs right there. There's your uh, ground lift on and off, and there's your button. So I guess when you want to activate it, if you can see, I could press it on. Probably to turn it on, press it to activate it and turn it off. And on the side, there is a 9 volt adapter there. The only thing that sucks with this thing, and I didn't even realize that, I guess it don't suck too bad, is that it don't come with an adapter. You would think that it would. Most of them do. It is a 9 volt adapter, so, you know, if you see it right there, I, I might have one that, you know, I have a few around, so there, I might have something that works for it, but that does kind of suck if they don't give you that. But it's battery operated too, which that might be better anyway, so if, if you're, you know, playing next to your amp or your mixer or your PA system or whatever, and you don't have an additional um, outlet, you can just use the battery, so that's probably going to even work better, just as long as you don't forget to turn it off, you know. But there is a 9 volt, uh, I nine volt um, connection there. <clears throat> so that's it, guys. One of these days, maybe I'll show you how it actually works. I'll um, open it, hook the base up to it, and just you know show you that what it does. Nothing too extravagant and over the top. It's just it's a little late now. It's like two twenty in the morning. You know, EKS has got I think another two three days of school. You know, I think his finals like Thursday. So I'm I'm trying to you know, give him some uh, quality, good rest time. And then that next week, you know, he, he's he's a nomad, that guy. He, he, don't stay in one, he don't stay in one place too long, you know. So next week, um, once school, or I'm sorry, once school ends for him like this Thursday, I, I think, let's see, okay. So today is the 9th. So Thursday is his last day, and he's actually going to Las Vegas. So Thursday... When he um gets out of school, I, I won't even see him. You know, he'll uh, I think right after school he's going straight to Denver, and he's gonna meet some of his friends that he's going with to to Vegas with. You know, from here in Denver, and um he's gonna meet some of his friends, and they're gonna go straight to Vegas. So you know, once he um finishes school Thursday, he'll be in Vegas for a few days. I think they're going like Thursday to Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so he'll be back, like, probably Monday afternoon, probably Tuesday, I'm sure he'll stay here for, like, a week, you know, he'll, he'll pack up his clothes and his stuff he um, brought down from school, and then he'll bounce, I, I don't see him staying here longer than, you know, a week after school graduates, because, because, you know, he hasn't been working here, so, you know, he's, he's kind of probably getting low on money, and, you know, getting kind of broke now. I, I, I think he did get, like, it was the last paycheck from his work last year or something. And then he got some other money, too, for something. I don't know. It was something that, you know, a work bonus or something. So it kind of helped. And it was a decent bonus, you know, like a couple grand or something. So it, it, it's definitely, you know, helped him for the whole year. He's had to spread it out. But nevertheless, you know, like I'm saying, once he's done... I don't see EKS sticking around. He's going to Vegas Thursday. He'll be back Monday. He'll probably stay here for a few days just to pack his stuff up, and then he'll bounce. I'm sure he'll be in, in Denver, you know, week after next week. And then um, I think he's going to stay there for a few months. He's going to get his old job back, make some money, and then he's moving to um, California. What is it? Is it Park Lake, California? What's it called? Park City? I'm not sure, you know. I think it's a Park City, Utah. That's exactly what it is. It's a it's Park City, Utah. Yeah, so you know it's pretty close to California, I guess. So he'll be in Park City. He won't even um the next four or five months he won't even be here. But then you know what's I mean it, it it's it's gonna be cool for me. You know once he's um 
gone within you know the next two weeks i I can do late night stuff i mean i can make music late night too there's there's nobody down here except me most of the time you know but now with him and next door i, I kind of keep the the volume a little lower but but you know nowadays i can actually you know it like a lot of times you know i'll be busy i won't i'll be working throughout the day or, or doing something you know and i won't have time i won't have time you know to do anything during the day just you know i might not even be home so i won't be able to do any videos but then once i get home or whatever and wind down you know a lot of times I, i'm a late owl you know if i don't have anything to do the next day and then you know i've had a long nine ten hour day I, my you know how would you say my evenings and my late nights are pretty much my time for me you know just like some people work graveyards you know that that's my time to uh because i'm busy the whole day you know so usually like late night is my time to wind down maybe you know throw a video in maybe and, and you know with, with not having to worry about distracting eks next door you know there'll be late nights where i might get creative and i might just want to go off and kick a freestyle or do a loud beat or something and you know i can then though as for the moment i, I try to keep that down a little and, and do more get wild with it louder you know freestyle stuff like that during the day although i probably still did a few in the nighttime just not as much but it, it'll just be a little more you know just um at ease for me too just i, I know I, I can get loud and i won't be distracting him you know or i won't have to feel like i have to be quiet because he's here and then you know he'll be done with school he ain't gonna worry about you know the noise so i definitely it, it'll be it'll be a little different you know I'll, I'll try to get on my grind and maybe do some late night you know really get down kick some dope ass freestyles i mean i'm freestyle but i ain't giving you guys the dopest shit yet you know i, I haven't even flexed you know what i could do vocally with my voice or any of that i mean i'll get there one of these days but um all right guys i'm gonna bounce you know like i said it's i i pulled this one off kind of late it's like i don't even know it's like 2 23 in the morning you know i'm probably gonna smoke me a bed timer i might watch me something late night i might watch a recap of the olympics i know they stream it on the uh is it the nbc app or cbs i was watching whatever i was watching it on earlier i don't know and i'm pretty sure you know they have that app for this shield i would think you know nvidia shield android tv by now has those apps it seems like those you know network television apps are, are always available for these machines so maybe i'll go ahead i don't have it downloaded i don't you know i have mostly games and youtube and netflix and a couple other ones so maybe i'll download it and, and just recap you know i mean i'm sure i could just turn on one of the channels now i watched it all all you know pretty much all day so there's probably nothing i need to recap on it's just you know it would be nice just to see how the app actually works and the tv that i watched it on you know it's cable but it, it's not like a high definition tv you know it's an old square box tv still 48 480p although it looked it looks nice you know it's not like watching it on the hd so we'll see what's up but all right guys i'm gonna bounce freestyle is you know gonna get ready for his late night bed timer and um that's what's up you know i i can't click anymore and i'll have to get one of those things too my bluetooth shutter remote don't work it's weird when i click it all it does is take pictures which when i first bought it it was um it had two modes it had one mode where it would take pictures depending on the button you press and one mode where it would do the video and i think i might have jacked it up because when i took it with me camping you know there was all kinds of crap that was on it and maybe it got you know smashed and that might have messed up something in its firmware whatever you know messed up its circuits or something because both buttons oh, when you press them they only shutter to take a picture you don't get video anymore so you know i gotta get up and, and manually go to the side and, and turn it off this um, phone camera but all right guys i'm out you know all i'm clocking in a few days maybe i'll check in friday if we get to open in my guitar you know that's gonna be fun see what's up with that gotta test in my new akg d8000m um, dynamic vocal mic so there's a lot of stuff i have to do i have tons of games i gotta catch up on too you know but all right, Freestyle Steve is out. Peace.